You are listening to Let's Get Metaphysical. This podcast explores the spiritual and metaphysical world through the experiences and opinions of the host and those interviewed. It should not necessarily be seen as direct endorsement or personal advice to our listeners. We encourage you to use your own discernment, judgment, and intuition regarding anything you learn from this show. Let's get better. Welcome to Let's Get Metaphysical, the podcast that explores the intersections of science and spirituality. I'm your host, Renata Maniachi, and I'm here to help you remember why you came here. You are a spiritual being having a temporary human experience here on lovely planet Earth. And there's a massive shift in consciousness going on right now that you signed up to be here for. And don't you forget it. As always, I encourage you to think, feel, and know the truth for yourself. Take what resonates and leave the rest. Do your own research and use your own intuition. This is Season 5, The Great Awakening. And this is Episode 65, The Light Shall Set You Free, with special guest Dr. Norma Milanovic. Dr. Norma Milanovic, president of Athena Leadership Center, is a talented facilitator of training and organizational development. She began her career as an instructor of education at the University of Houston and was then an assistant professor of education at the University of New Mexico. In 1984, Dr. Milanovic had an experience that forever altered her life when she began to receive telepathic messages from beings who identified themselves as Arcturians from the fifth dimension. After a period of research and understanding into the reaches of the celestial hierarchy, Norma gradually accepted the strangeness of this new experience, and it inspired her inner soul and mind to develop her own company and to co-author several books. Her three books, We the Arcturians, Sacred Journey to Atlantis, and The Light Shall Set You Free are sources of inspiration and awakening to many souls on this planet. Her books intrigue and stimulate the mind and souls of any high-spirited, positive individual. Dr. Norma generously shares the information she receives from the celestial realms to aid humankind in its ascension. I have to admit, I'm very excited about this episode. If you hear the fangirl tone in my voice throughout this interview, know that it is because Norma's third book, The Light Shall Set You Free, was one of the tools that greatly helped me in my own awakening and in remembering why my soul came to the planet at this time. The Light Shall Set You Free is about soul empowerment and the universal laws. I used the same title for this episode, though I could have just as easily titled it, The Light Is Setting Us Free. In this interview, Dr. Norma talks a lot about how we are currently engaged in a battle for the minds and a battle for souls. We also have another 25-minute behind-the-scenes exclusive portion of this interview available to those in my Up, Up, and Awaken community on Patreon. If you are interested in how to access that and all the other behind the scenes exclusive portions of other interviews with other guests, please stay tuned after this part of the interview. And now let's jump right into this exciting and rare interview to hear what Dr. Norma has to say about this unique time on our planet. Are you ready? Let's get meta. I would like to welcome to the show Dr. Norma Milanovic. It's my great honor and huge pleasure to have you on today, Dr. Norma. Thank you so much for joining. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, Renata, and it's a real pleasure to be with you in this interview, and I'm looking forward to it. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day. I know how busy you are. 
Dr. Norma, I would love to start this interview with the same question I have for all of my guests. And that is, would you please share a spiritual or metaphysical experience that you've had with us? Yes, I'd be happy to do that. I've had so many, hundreds. <clears throat> when you work with the Ascended Masters for as long as I have, I can tell you that the experiences start collecting like trophies, if you will, yeah. in your mind, in your, you know, your memories, and sometimes even in the physical plane. One thing that comes to mind, and this would be not in the awakening or what I did um, to open, to receive the messages and start working with these beings of light on the other side of the veil. But something that comes to mind is one of the journeys that we were on early on, too. Um, it wasn't too long after we started getting information and using it that Ascended Master Katumi began to organize journeys. And then the power of the collective mind or the collective spirit running through us would be guided to go to different places on the planet to set light frequencies, to do prayers in certain places, to go to sacred sites and things like that. Well, one of the journeys, Renata, it was early on, and we had like 60-some people on this journey. We were guided to go to Greece. And I was way back, I think, in the 90s even, and um, he told us in the messages up front, he said, before you even leave, choose an ancient god of antiquity from Greece and connect with this essence, this energy. And when you are on the journey, merge with this essence. He was trying to get us into becoming more than we could be, you know, merge with somebody who is in the mythology journals, you know, about having extra power and things like that. And he was basically slowly, slowly pushing us then into opening our minds to become greater than we could be. Well, we all arrived in Athens, and of course, we'd have these messages for weeks. So everyone had whoever it is that they were going to connect to in mind, and we met. Well, we spent the first couple of days in Athens, and of course, there was time to do 3D things, and like go shopping. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, we could get souvenirs. You know, it isn't all spiritual. You know, it's a blend of, you know, all the beautiful things the universe offers. Right. So one of our participants, her name was Ingeborg, and she was from Sweden. She was a lovely, lovely lady, an elderly lady with so much grace and beauty. And I think that might have even been the first time I had met her when she came on that journey. And, um, of course, we had already had our sessions. We had already started doing the work. Well, Ingeborg, in her shopping, evidently she had picked Pallas Athena as her god. Hmm. And she bought this necklace and these earrings and this ring that all had the owl on it. And the owl is Athena's, almost like Merlin's, you know, Archimedes, the owl, the wisdom and that. She's often shown with this owl because of how intelligent and wise she was. Right. And... Um, so Ingeborg is wearing her jewelry, and everybody sees it, you know, on the bus and to the different sites. Well, we leave Athens, and we go now, and we start going to the sacred sites, and then all of a sudden, a couple of days later, we're at Thessaloniki, which is the birthplace of Alexander the Great, mm. and we're supposed to be doing some things in this land and everything, too. And all of a sudden, we're out, we're following the guidance the masters have told us to do in many, many messages. We're doing group, group work, individual. 
all of a sudden, I see Ingeborg coming back, and this was like an hour or so after we'd been there, and she's crying, <clears throat> and she's shaking, and, you know, and she comes over to the bus, and of our people, and I thought, what the heck? Mm. And she holds out her hand, and she was a little afraid to tell me because she was afraid that she might hurt my feelings. But she said, I have to tell you, I have to tell you, she said, I went out there, and she said, we've been on this journey now like five or six days, and it was like a 12-day journey. And she said, I was getting so upset. And she said, I was saying out there to Pallas Athena. Pallas Athena, I picked you. I asked to merge with you at Mount Olympus is when we were supposed to do that. We hadn't arrived there yet at Mount Olympus. But she said, I've been here for five days or six, however long. And she said, I haven't even felt your vibration. I have seen nothing. I have felt nothing here. And she said, you know, what is this? And she was really, really upset. Wow, yeah. And she, so she basically, you know, stated her peace to the universe. She looked down at the ring on her hand. And keep in mind, everybody on the bus had seen this jewelry day after day because people get excited about their little souvenirs. Yeah. And, you know, you show it to everybody. And... In front of her, the owl had turned into the head of Pallas Athena with her helmet. Wow. It was so perfectly crafted. It wasn't even like a cloud formation when you try to make out a face in it or something like that. Oh, my gosh. And everyone came running around because we'd all seen it. She then admitted how she literally was not that nice. And you know, Renata, before that journey went ended, so did her necklace. They were all identical, the earrings, wow. the necklace, and the ring. The necklace also turned into the exact same head of Athena with her helmet, but the two earrings kept the owl on them. Wow. They never changed. And when we're working with that level of power, having witnessed things like that, this, these were some of the examples or stories we've had on many, many of our journeys. In working with the ascended realms this close on the other side of the veil, that kept people signing up for my journeys. I have had many of them. We've had about 100. And they signed up for 10 15, 20, 25, some of them have gone like 30, 35 journeys out of that 100. No one, no one would spend that amount of money or time if they didn't realize that we were definitely working in another parallel universe that literally did show the evidence. Because when the masters were working with us with this very sacred work, they were always there and we always saw the signs. It would appear in our pictures. We would actually see some of the ascended masters in our pictures. They would pop out of anywhere. The things would manifest in front of us and things like that. So when you asked me this question, it wasn't right in the beginning and what kind of caught my attention to go on my spiritual path because I didn't start it till I was 40. And these are the memories that are so irreplaceable. And so they captured my heart as they did everyone else's that I just want to share that. Absolutely. They changed our lives. I mean, if that's not a spiritual so that's experience. Just one of many, 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 but <laughs> You know, so we got a lot more to cover here. So I'll just leave it at that. Okay. Oh, I love that story, Dr. Norma. Thank you so much for sharing it. I mean, selfishly, oh my goodness, I would have loved to go on those journeys with you had I been older than, you know, 
I was born in 86. So when your book came out, I was 10. <laughs> <laughs> I was starting my first journeys about that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness. And we did have a rule that no one, I think it was no one under, I, I can't even remember, like 12 or 18. Oh, of course. Because we were not going to babysit. <laughs> no, no, you can't. Not on so some kind of journey like that. Allowed, but yeah, it's a really nice thought on your part, though. Oh, I Thank love you. it. That's a be- that's a beautiful story to share. Thank you so much. And yeah, we do. I have so many questions I want to cover with you and I want to definitely respect your time. So let me move on to the next one that I've been asking the guests, particularly this season on the podcast. And I've been calling this particular season the Great Awakening just because of the massive shift in consciousness that seems to be happening on the planet right now. So what I'd love to ask you, Dr. Norma, is what is your take on what is happening right now at this time on the planet? Well, I have my perception that has been reinforced by almost 40 years of messages from Ascended Master Kathumi and the other masters as well. So it isn't just how I thinking or how I perceive things. What I will say with confidence, even though some other people haven't even thought of it this way, we are presently experiencing and in the midst of the seventh battle of Armageddon that is written about in the Dead Sea Scrolls. Now, these Dead Sea Scrolls are in the museum in Israel And they detail very accurately that in the end times, there will be seven battles and the sons and daughters of darkness will win the first three battles, hands down. And they did in the last 30, 40, 50 years. They took control of everything on the planet. We were still asleep, even the light workers. Mm. And they took control of the military. They took control of our health. They took control of blah, 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 medicine, everything, you know, and and we weren't even aware. We were so innocent. Mm. And then these uh, Dead Sea Scrolls say that the next three battles will be won by the sons and daughters of light, and the seventh and final battle will also be won by the sons and daughters of light, but it is at that point that these demons of darkness will throw everything that they can, everything that they have in upon us, at us, trying to stop us or, you know, give us problems or setbacks or whatever it might be. And what I'm seeing, having had these messages for so long, and Kasumi's constantly keeping us um, alerted to the stages we're in and when we cross certain markers and things like that for the last, you know, couple of decades, we are presently in the seventh battle of Armageddon, which is why you see the insanity and the madness and... In this battle, it's very similar to what they wrote about that famous author, the Lord of the Rings. Wow. You know, in the the trilogy, you know, the return of the king and the last and final battle when the wizards were fighting and everything was turned upside down, blah, blah, blah. Wow. Well, when you also look at it from this perspective and you start coupling that with many of the things in the scriptures, Um, you will know that it was stated in there, in the end times, um, all of the lies will be the truth, and all of the truth will be the lies. So when you look at what's going on right now, the lies and the deceptions, and it just goes on and on ad nauseum on everything. And you've even heard, if you're lucky enough to get a hold of some kind of tape from some Illuminati member or whatever, where they're quoted and you can actually see them saying it and then they you know it goes out on the airwaves for certain people to look at too many of them said we will know that we have been successful when 
everything on this planet that humans think is truth will be a lie. I've wow. actually seen, and I'm, as I'm saying this, some of your viewers probably, oh, I remember that tape. Yeah. You know, where you can see some of yeah. them say that because they are deliberate in doing it. Right. And um, so this insanity, everything that is going on right now, is actually separating. And what Jesus said, which is recorded in the Bible or the scriptures as well, is in the end days, all of the lambs will be on my right and all of the goats will be on the left. If you try to ride the middle of the fence, now this isn't quoting him exactly, but it's similar to what he said, I will spat you out of my mouth. And you can look it up. It's in the Bible talking about this time. So what it's doing is there are opportunities for people here to literally choose light or darkness. We are going on to the fifth dimension. We all know this. We are going forward now, and we have to have the whole curriculum. We can't go without one arm or one leg or just try to sneak in and, well, I believe in this and this, but I'm not going to embrace this and that. You don't do that. It, it, Jesus said, when it's over, all of the lambs will be on my right and all, all of the goats will be on my left. And if you try to be a pe people pleaser, if you try to lie and pretend it isn't so or hide behind your little finger, imagine someone standing there holding up only their little finger thinking they're hiding. <laughs> you know, you can't see me or what I'm doing. Right. It doesn't work that way. So what we're seeing now is this uh, grand chasm occurring that is the purification of the human species and the light coming in literally to wash the sins, you know, of humanity and to place people in that area that they have earned. See, it isn't about someone punishing us. It isn't about somebody telling us, well, you know, it's this and that or whatever, and we don't want you in our higher kingdom or whatever. No. Kasumi said it's never been that way. He said the rules, the laws for going on into the higher worlds are very clear, very cut and dried. He said it isn't us up here who do the choosing. It's you down there by how you behave, what you choose to say, what you choose to think. And then one time in the last few years in some of the classes, because we, you know, I work and bring through things constantly, you know, in sessions and whatever, he surprised us all a few years ago. And he said, contrary to public opinion, and he was trying to be a little light of it, he said, I'm going to set the, the, the playing field straight here. He said, in heaven, there is no democracy. Hello? <laughs> he said, God's word rules. It has been given to you by the great prophets and, you know, the Ten Commandments and all of these things. He said, your choice. He said, because there is no democracy. But he said, up here, we don't have the insanity you have on earth because... Everyone who's up here is following God's laws, God's word, the higher living, if you will. Everyone is on the same page. And you can come here too anytime, but you have to prove that you're reliable. You have to prove that you want to be that way, but you're going to hold it. Because if it was, otherwise it wouldn't be any different than earth. And so, you know, we sat and thinking, and here we've all been awakened for 30 years, and sometimes he just says these things in such a way, it's like, of course, I get it. Yeah. And it isn't about punishment, it's about a choice, is the way he put it. We want you all, come, but you have to literally obey certain laws, certain rules, and you cannot come in with your lower agendas and expect then to try 
you know, to have that happen. And he never said this, but he probably was referring to, well, maybe God was that generous thousands or millions of years ago when Lucifer rebelled then. And we, we learned from history. We ain't doing that again. Mm. You know, he didn't say that. That's just me. But, you know, the stories are there as above, so below. So when you ask me about this great awakening, I see madness and all this chaos down here. But in this all, I see opportunity. I see opportunity for every person who is serious about loving God and embracing the light, moving to kindness. And people then who want to evolve on the, and go into creation, not into destruction and death and all of the things that the dark agenda brings with it. And I see opportunity for people to use these moments right now to make serious choices and literally show the light that they really do want to advance right now. And that's what I call the Great Awakening. And then when you're there and you're in that stratosphere, that frequency, the Ascended Masters come in and they enlighten your mind, awaken you even more and even faster. But if you're still stuck in the mud, you know, on Mondays and Thursdays, you're really good, little goody two-choos. And then on Wednesdays and Saturdays or something, you decide to go and loot and burn and, you know, do whatever you need to do or be unkind or go out and bully people on internet or something like that. Hey, it's a choice. You ain't going to make it, according to Kasumi. It's cut and dried. It's easy. We have an easy way to get in here. Just clean up your act and you're in. (laughs) But most people don't want to. And he says the reason why primarily is because the egos, me, 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 are just so underdeveloped and out of balance. And all they can see is me, 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 that they can't see into service to others kindness, humbling yourself, taking less maybe, and then sharing or what you do have, embracing, you know, to, in a community spirit. And this, these are the lessons you have to learn to be able to get into the higher worlds. And if they're still into me, 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 well, hey, come around again in a hundred years, but there's always plenty of opportunities. It might not be on the earth plane. But there are going to be plenty of opportunities to live and to experience life on the vibrational frequency that they are presently on. In fact, I think it's endless. It isn't just about Earth. I think there's many, many different experiences that the soul can choose. So in this battle, it's all about a battle for the souls, and it's about a battle for the mind. And... The service right now is the same thing that Jesus had to do 2,000 years ago. In his ministry, if you start looking at all the stories, everything he did on earth at that time primarily was casting out demons. If the cripple couldn't walk, he cast out the demon that was tricking them, and suddenly they could walk. Or if they were blinded, he cast out the demon, be gone, and then even to Satan, the 40 year, days or not years, Moses was years, I think 40 days in the desert and all these things. He just cast them out. And so now we're picking up where he left off. He said, everything I can do, so shall he, and many more will come after me and greater things that they will do. So this great awakening now means that we too are coming forward now, aligning with this Christ energy, the Trinity energy, the love and light of God on the planet. And as we move forward now, we too, with the power and the tools we have of the Holy Spirit working through us or calling upon the name of Jesus, we now, it's a cleanup job and we have to get rid They don't belong here. They never did belong here. But they were allowed in by humans and principalities and all of these things. Well, now we're casting out demons too. 
and a lot of people have done this for a long time, but it's coming in so fast now because the CERN project a few years ago opened up the bottomless pit. There's so much documentation out there that they were successful, that these demons have been coming in by the droves for the last several years to the point where look at where our world so rapidly descended into. And now we have to clean up, and it's more than just taking a vacuum cleaner. You know, we have to command, just like Jesus did, same way, and literally cast them out, you know, and just literally and i just call in and i do this and i call in the name of jesus in the name of jesus christ you know and i just go moment by moment day by day in the silence of my mind sometimes with this power the spoken word and to me this is the spiritual battle we do win in the end we're just in the trenches right now and it doesn't look very hopeful some days Mm. but According to the Dead Sea Scrolls, we have already won. You just can't see your way clear yet. But there's been a lot of things that have actually already happened to the point we're in the seventh battle of Armageddon, even though we don't see it. We are winning all of these smaller battles now until the end or the big victory will come. Wow. Most people don't talk that way. Most people don't see it that way, but I stand by it, and I have 35 years of messages from Kathumi preparing us for this time, and now he continues to encourage us. Keep doing what you're doing, spreading the light, etc., etc. Pray. Pray is the greatest weapon that we have. Pray on your knees, he says, and every time you see something that is not right, Pray that it literally be removed, eliminated, transformed into the light. And little by little, the turtle always wins the race. We're the turtle right now. <laughs> that, so there you go, Renata. I, no, Dr. Norma, everything that you are saying resonates on a level that is so deep that I don't know that I can explain it verbally except to say that You know, everything in your book, The Light Shall Set You Free, resonated so deeply with me. And you wrote that 24 years ago. And now we are in this moment that I I don't think anyone would disagree with you that we're in the middle of a battle. And, you know, my listeners know that I am not religious. I didn't grow up religious, but I am deeply spiritual. And in the last several years, Jesus has become one of my guides, my premier guides. So when you're talking about you know, things that was said in the Bible and Jesus coming forward and the messages that you've gotten from Katumi, for me, it, it this is this supersedes anything that religion would put on that this is spiritual truth. And these are spiritual and universal laws that we must follow in order to ascend to the fifth dimension. So everything you're saying, I am so grateful for. And, and it was said in a lovely, understandable way. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. You're so welcome. Well, it helps (laughs) to talk, compare ideas. And, um, you know, even for the listeners, the more they hear different things, the greater their discernment becomes, too. Absolutely. I just, yeah, everything you said was perfect. I I could go into it. That could be the entire, that could be the entire interview. Um, But I'm going to keep going here with a couple more questions, (laughs) if that's okay. But I think that was a huge, huge piece. Sure, go, go for it. Yeah, no problem. I wanted to ask, and you touched on this, but what what was the reason and the impetus for you and Dr. Shirley McCune, and where did she come into the story? What was the impetus for you to write or to channel The Lights Shall Set You Free, and, and what was the process of doing that? Well, as I said a little while ago, all of the material, and I know, All is not the right word. Most of the material in that book, I had already been teaching in workshops worldwide. Okay. All over Europe and Canada and different places and that for years. And they loved it. Oh, in fact, when I would teach this information in a workshop, if they knew I was coming back, they'd be signing up in droves. You know, I have so many people in those workshops in all those countries and 
when I was coming back, I'd even have more because they'd tell their friends. I realized then that I couldn't keep doing the same workshops over and over again. Right. So this information that had been tested by thousands of people needed to be put in another format. And in the 90s, we didn't have that many, like, well, we did have not CDs then. We had tapes and stuff like that and those beta tapes or whatever. But I just felt like the book was the best way to present it. Shirley had been a really good friend for a long time. We were both in education. And so it fit both of us. She was on the spiritual path. She'd gone on several of my journeys. Mm. We were colleagues and professionals. So we just decided that we would put it out there for the public. She had attended my workshop. She knew the information. And we shared the same philosophy of life, you know, working with the Ascended Masters and things. So we just came to an agreement. And um, we put it together. Most of it is channeled, most of, but we wrote it in a textbook kind of form. Right. So that all this information that came through in messages and that was turned into more of a textbook because both she and I have the skills to do that. And we just want, basically, we wanted everyone on the planet to get that knowledge. It's an educational textbook, if you will. And that's why at the back, when I, it says, and I'm looking at my book right here now, and it says, the Ascended Masters state this book is destined to transform the world because it has all the laws of the universe. It has all of the information and everything of how the universe runs that we don't get in our classrooms. We don't even get it in textbooks. So it came in from above because we're going to a higher dimension. You know, we're entering these higher worlds in that now. So it was a part of leaving our legacy behind. So it would always be here. And then people who read it, but who had not yet gone into the fifth dimension or higher, then this would be one of the stepping stones, the tools that they could use to change their life. Because it does have the power to transform the world because all the secrets, you know, for manifestation and everything are there with the four forms of energy. And, hey, you just follow them and follow them in the light and watch your life change. It is absolutely. And so it was the people in the workshops that gave us the inspiration or gave me the inspiration and then I just asked Shirley one day if she wanted to help you know do that it is absolutely a guidebook thank you and Stephen I don't remember now but I even got letters that it was used and maybe still is in certain colleges around the country wow you know they'd have their theology classes and stuff like that and that made me feel real good too especially coming from academia. My whole life was that. Right. So, yeah. It absolutely is a guidebook. And I, 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 until you said that, that it, you wrote it in kind of an academic textbook type of way. I, I never thought of it like that, but I too have a background. My whole life up until a few years ago was in academia and it very much is, which it kind of explains why maybe partially why I love it so much, but I, this is a book that absolutely has changed the world and continues to change the world. This is a book that I sleep, that it sleep, it is next to me while I'm sleeping. It's on my bedside table. And I don't know how many times I refer to it, but it is, it is that powerful. Just the vibration of it being there is so powerful. So it, it's, you know, it's unlike anything that I've ever read before. And I guess I'm saying this more for the listeners because you already know this. <laughs> but um, it, it it's 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 really amazing to talk to you about your process in it, too, because it, I'm I'm seeing. Oh, yeah, it is kind of written in an academic kind of format, but it is so easy to go through. And even the summary at the end of each chapter is so perfect. And um, I think you and I have very similar minds in terms of our efficiency and, and, and the way that we think. So I really very much appreciate the way that it came out and came through. Oh, that's really sweet. 
So yeah, and uh, it was a labor of love, and um, I'm really glad that we took the time to do it. And um, I don't know, it was just something that I think was just meant to be. Absolutely, it it absolutely yeah. had to meant come into to the world. I wanted to ask you something about um, that came through that I wanted to ask about from the book. It said. And, and forgive me if I'm catching you off guard, because I know that this <laughs> that you you said that you don't you know, you haven't read it in a while, which is understandable as the author. You don't sit there reading your own book every day. But in the book, it says that the masters are no longer coming in one by one. And said so the masters are no longer coming in one by one. Can you go into what that means? What does it mean that the masters are no longer well, coming in one by one? I can basically only channel my answer right now because I don't even know what page you're referring to with that or in the context. But let me tell you what's coming through right now sure. that might have prompted that to be said at the time. It's our time now. The masters have come to Earth over and over and over again whenever Earth was in the darkest of times. They have <clears throat> literally picked up the cross for us, picked up the work, uh, shifted consciousness. And if you go into their own biographies, you realize that many of them have had incredibly significant lifetimes every time they did come down. For example, just the one ascended Master Katumi. In another lifetime, he was St. Francis of Assisi. And look, at a time when there was, I don't even think the printing press was, maybe it was, you know, invented that. And I don't even know the exact, you know, year and things like that in history. But there was no phones, no fax machines, no copy machines, right. nothing. And yet, there's hardly a person on the planet today that doesn't know of St. Francis of Assisi. Right. He was also Pythagoras and shifted consciousness and brought in the power of sacred geometry, which is used in creating some of the greatest architectural structures, Chartres Cathedral and all of them today can, you know, they realize that the reason why they stand for centuries and they're so beautiful is because of the crystallized sound, the crystallized music through the sacred geometry mm. that has been put in the structures. Anyway, there's many, many more like that. El Moria. El Moria was supposedly King Arthur. Right. St. Germain played Merlin. Um, you know, you go back, he was up King Solomon, you know, and when it was the hardest of times and there were difficult times, these great souls came down to earth to change consciousness, to shift it. And those jobs in those lifetimes, you can only imagine how stressful. If we think we've got it bad now in the Seventh Battle of Armageddon, I can't even imagine what they might have gone through right. you know, with 10,000 warring enemies ready to you know, come over the hill and that with clubs and, you know, and take your kingdom or whatever it might be. Well, my sense is that that was put there is because now it's our time to prove ourselves, to shift the, con the consciousness on the planet, to help humanity. We were always there with them. We played other roles, many of them that didn't even get into the history books, I'm sure, but we learned from them. We were the greatest students that they've had. And now we are down here to pick up the slack, to take these roles, to pick up the cross, if you will, and to bring humanity and this planet to seed it from a planet into a star in the universe and get it into the fifth dimension. Even the Arcturians and we the Arcturians, when they compare the fifth dimensional world to the third dimension of Earth, make that very clear. So it isn't that they're not coming down one-on-one -on -one because they 
channel to people one on one. Right. We see the effects even in the book. Everybody can take advantage of the light shall set you free in this book and read it. Right. I don't know. But anyway, that's my answer. You have to go with it. That's great. No, I love it. What is your personal hope or goal for humanity at this time? Kindness. And through that kindness, to connect with God, the Holy Trinity, the Holy Spirit. Just as Jesus said, when everyone asked him, oh, Master, Master, how can you do everything you can do? You know, how do you do this? You know, and things like that. His constant answer in the Bible was, of me, I do nothing. It is the Father within me that does it all. And because he was literally at the head of his class, he was like the number one student. He had learned and earned all of the credits and everything for holding the perfect vibrational frequency, he could then be the channel and allow the Holy Spirit to flow through him, to heal the sick, to raise the dead, to do whatever that was needed. For me now, as we go forward into this fifth dimension, and it is a battle for the soul, the more individuals in humanity that can catch on to the power of the light, and that takes kindness, being loving, doing whatever it's going to take to raise your vibrations, raise your vibrations, and not get into the seven deadly sins of anger and envy and theft and all these different things. Then the more souls that can go on. And I feel very strongly that where we are headed in this higher world is really what everybody really wants on a very deep level of their soul. And I'm talking about humans or souls that can evolve. I'm not talking about demons. I think that they love what they do in creating hardship and blockages and doing everything they can to drag things down, burn buildings, loot, do whatever kind of thing. They love that. I, I don't even go there anymore. God bless them. You know, do your thing. But my job is to help those whose minds are not already captured by or into mind control by the dark forces and who want a better loving life for themselves. They want to expand their mind, their soul, the beauty of everything around. So if I can help them make connections to hold on to the light, to understand the tests that we have to go through to prove ourselves worthy of this path and give them some tools answers sometimes as to what are the right answers to get through that gateway i'm there for them and this is what i want in this battle for the souls it goes through the mind and this is why i think so many have come forth that are trying to conquer you know this for decades this country and everything and they're just saying we're after your children's minds because those Demons, if you will, know exactly the game plan. Right. Well, we want the souls. But we have to go through the minds. And the minds then, with the free will, belong to the person. So whatever we can do to teach, to help them see the light, and realize that it's so much a better world in creation than it is, in battling destruction and hardship and pain and suffering and all the things that go with the other side. That's what I want. That's my hope for the world. But I've also surrendered with Kasumi's advice. Just as he told me and our group through my messages many times, dear ones, we cannot do this for you. 
you must do it for yourself. And herein lies the difference as to why you're still down there and we're up here. You must want it. You must be it. You must do it because these are the higher laws. This is what you have to, we're, we'll offer them, we write books, we'll show it all to you. All you have to do is choose it. A lot of light workers feel they want to save the world. And they just feel like I have to save everybody and you know, work and work and work on this one and that one, etc. I was that way too. And I'm sure you've gone through those stages. Everybody does, I think, at some time. But when you mature and you grow up, you begin to realize that's in God's hands. But you can be an instrument for God. I can write the book. I can leave the wisdom behind for somebody to then, the same way I had to learn it on my own, to want it. And that's why I continue putting things out, whether it be books or classes or whatever I'm doing, just to light the path, show the way. And if every one of us did that, they would have those that aren't at a certain level a frequency yet they would have all the tools they need. All they have to do is do the work. But up in heaven, they don't have free phones, <laughs> free this, free that. <laughs> I don't want to work for it. I just want it free. No way. You have to earn it. Mm. And then when they start earning it, they realize that it is in the earning that they begin to love themselves the most because that's when the skill development starts happening and they feel better about themselves. They increase their self-concepts and everything is beautiful, really beautiful. So that's my answer. I love it. You gotta earn it on your own. I was curious. I've had a personal session with you. Are most of your personal sessions, would you say, helping to connect people to their personal missions? That was certainly my experience. In the last couple of years, they have been because the divine plan on the planet is such now where people could step up to the plate and the missions were being handed out by the hierarchy. I didn't know that they were going to start using me for that. But after I was doing, I've been doing readings for decades, and then all of a sudden they started changing. Wow. And then I realized it was a pattern. So I was used differently, so I just kept going with the program. And now I realize that when I see what the world has evolved into and how needed it is for people to do this work, it's become a no-brainer. It's like, well, of course. And as long as I was open-minded and I could receive it and I could go forward, then everything would be fine. Dr. Norma, how can our listeners find out more about you and your work? Well, we have a website, and the website is www.athena, first word is Athena, A-T-H-E-N-A, and then there's four more letters, L-C-T-R. And that's for Leadership Center. So Athena Leadership Center dot com. All right. I am so, so grateful to you, Dr. Norma. It's been lovely having you on the show. I'm absolutely so happy that you made the time today. Thank you so much. Thank you. And I really appreciate it too, Renata, that you've asked me to be a part of your life and with your audience. And God bless you. Good luck in everything that you do. Thank you, Dr. Norma. You as well. Blessings. A huge, huge thank you to Dr. Norma Milanovic for joining me today. For both this interview and the behind-the-scenes exclusive discussion, which is available to my Up, Up, and Awaken community members. In that portion, Dr. Norma and I discuss details of her first experiences connecting with higher dimensional beings, how to be disciplined enough to to receive clear and high-level information, the role karma plays in delivering clear information, 
and the importance of discernment in receiving guidance, as well as some other fun tidbits, including messages for millennials and for those born on dates that add up to four, such as the 13th, the 31st, the 22nd, and the 4th, which includes both me and Dr. Norma. To hear this behind-the-scenes content with Dr. Norma Milanovic and all guests that I've had exclusive conversations with, please become a member of any tier of the Up, Up, and Awaken community at patreon.com slash up, up, and awaken. If you are listening to this episode in November or December of 2020, you have the opportunity to virtually attend workshops with master healer John Douglas as part of his Infinite Bliss Tour. Each workshop in the tour is packed with blessings from the moment you register and gives you a quantum leap in your spiritual development and soul progression which filters into all aspects of this earthly life and beyond. You also receive a blessing called a Silent Faith Remote Healing for every workshop you attend, which you can apply to any area of your life. You can sign up for these workshops by going to masterangels.org. If this is resonating with you, there is a reason for that. Do not ignore it. Check out masterangels.org. And if you want to learn more about John Douglas, check out the entire podcast season I did on him, which includes 50 different interviews with people who have experienced miracles with him and the master healing angels that he works with. This season is season four, and it's called the season of miracles. And you can start listening with episode 37 of this podcast. And lastly, I just wanted to announce that Julia Malone and I are running our hit course, Exit the Matrix, again at the end of November 2020. And as we can all know, feel, taste, and smell, the Matrix is indeed crumbling right now before our very eyes. And if you would like any help or assistance in waking up to the truth, of what is going on in this planet, this course, Exit the Matrix with myself and Julia Malone is an excellent way to do that. It is a three week live course that dives deep into deprogramming the mind, clearing brainwashing, mind control, subliminal messaging, conditioning, all the stuff we have picked up over a lifetime of being on this planet. And it is extremely powerful and you will be changed after the course. If you're interested, visit realizeyourawakening.com to learn more or sign up. I'm going to leave it there for today. Thank you for listening. Stay positive, stay safe, and stay meta. The statements and advice offered in this podcast are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease or medical condition and are not substitutes for prudent medical care offered by a licensed medical professional. The Let's Get Metaphysical podcast is an Up, Up, and Awaken production. Our intention is to raise the vibration of the planet by sharing, validating, and normalizing spiritual and metaphysical experiences. The show is produced and hosted by Renata Maniachi, co-creator of Up, Up, and Awaken Productions, a platform devoted to creating conscious content to assist in the awakening currently taking place on this planet. If you want to see more from Up, Up, and Awaken, please subscribe to the Up, Up, and Awaken Productions channel on YouTube. If you are looking for more support in your awakening process, please consider becoming a member of our Up, Up, and Awaken community on Patreon. Patrons in this community both give support to the conscious content that we create, like this podcast, and receive support in their awakening via the community's offerings, including courses, live group healings, and an interactive community. You can join the Up, Up, and Awaken community by visiting patreon.com slash up, up, and awaken. If you know someone who would like this episode, please share it with them. Subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss an episode. Give us a five-star rating or write us a review on your podcast app. To learn more, visit our website at letsgetmeta.com. The Let's Get Meta podcast is almost entirely listener supported. If you love the show and want to support it, you can still become a patron of the podcast at patreon.com slash up, up, and awaken. We appreciate all types of support. It helps keep this show going. Thank you for listening. Stay meta. Let's get meta. Metaphysical. Let's get meta. Metaphysical.
Thank you for listening, and please remember to subscribe to the Let's Get Meta YouTube channel. You can do that through the link below. Thank you for watching.